So first, let me thank the Orton Committee for selecting me. It's a great honor to, uh, to be selected because of all the, uh, all the wonderful speakers that preceded me in, that, in receiving this award. Let me also mention that it's truly a privilege to be here and to be part of this plenary section with this, uh, this uh, plenary session with all these wonderful speakers and so forth who really cover the gamut of material science and engineering. I'm going to focus on ceramics, and uh, nothing wrong with that. It's going to be about energy, which is something all of us know about very well. And um, um, hopefully, I'll be able to give you a glimpse into the future as to where I think all of this is going to be going for us. So let me just see if I can. I have a pointer over here. And this looks like, well, I'll do it from here. OK, so I love this cartoon from, uh, from New Yorker from the early 90s. Um, it's, uh, it's prescient because you have a person in, the, uh, in, a, in a desert. Maybe it's in Salt Lake. I don't know. But it's a desert in any event. Uh, he's wearing a Walkman. So that lets you, shows you it's the 90s. And it says underneath here, batteries, batteries. It truly is prescient because although our batteries have gotten better over the years, our energy storage devices have gotten better over the years, we still occasionally, you could see people who have anxiety because they don't have their battery power. Often you see them at, at airports. In any event, I'm going to talk a little bit about that. I'll introduce energy storage. I don't think we need a long um, history of, of why we need to have certain types of, uh, of energy in the future. You're going to give me this one. Does this one work? OK. Well, I'll take both of them. How does that sound? OK. I'll take both of them. OK. It's fine. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about energy storage. We'll talk about some recent advantage, uh, directions of lithium-ion batteries. But then I want to talk about areas of research that, that I'm involved in and others are as well, and that's the idea of being able to go into high energy and high power at the same time. It's something we cannot do today, and of course, that's what we want to do in the future. So very briefly then, uh, what do we know about energy in the future? We know it's going to grow. We know that there are countries throughout the world in general, as economics improve, countries tend to use more energy. And so even though in the US and the developed countries there might be a flattening out of energy usage, the fact remains is that worldwide we're going to be consuming more. The other part to mention to you is right over here. It's renewables. Renewables certainly will be getting off the ground. They already are getting off the ground in terms of being just a few percent. Um, but anytime you see renewables, you automatically have to think about energy storage. And the reason is because what, is, what unites all of these types of energy sources is the fact that they are just in time. They are produced at that moment. There is no way to save energy. And so this is why we say that in the future, we need to have energy storage. We know that energy storage can be used in conjunction with wind energy and solar energy and so forth because of this time factor of nothing else. We also know that energy storage is the central source of power when it comes to the electrification of, of our uh, transportation systems. So there's absolutely no question about energy storage in the future. The question is what? The question is why? Well, some of the why has to do with market. Because energy, like anything else, is market driven. And you can see the automotive markets, military markets, uh, the utilities, and so forth, they all will rely on energy storage. And of course, then there's the consumer part. And you might think that the consumer part may, may not be as large as these others. And I disagree. It's really, in many respects, the consumer electronics market is driving the energy storage market to a large degree. So what do we know about energy storage? Well, what we know is that lithium ion batteries are the premier mobile energy source. And uh, I'll go through how it works very briefly in a moment. But this is a nice plot that shows you the um, the amount of energy that's uh, stored is a fun, uh, uh, the, the amount of power that you generate versus the amount of energy that you store. And there are various types of battery systems which have all been superseded by lithium ion. You could still buy li uh, nickel metal hydride batteries. Um, I defy you to try to find a nickel cadmium battery these days. And it's because of the energy density is just so much better with a lithium ion battery. This is something for the students in the audience. It's called the market futures of uh, lithium ion batteries. Just for the consumer electronics, it's doubling. It's on a road towards doubling the uh, amount of um, the market from 10 billion 
up to over 20 billion, and that's in things like laptops and cell phones and so forth. And if other, these other tech, uh, technologies take off, they too are going to benefit uh, from the lithium-ion battery community in the sense that now you can expect that in energy storage, this would be for stationary energy storage with power plants, central power plants. There's a number of demonstration units that are, are showing the capabilities there. And then, of course, there's the electric vehicle market and so forth, So, which, again, would be another boost to this technology. So as we look in the future, there's no question that there's not much above here. There are a few systems that we talk about that are beyond lithium, lithium sulfur, but it's, it's many, many years away. And there are other systems as well um, that are being used. And I should mention that the genome that we heard about in the first lecture is playing a very important role in helping to identify what materials do you use and how do you use them. So in our lithium ion batteries, we have, <clears throat> it's very simple. It's, there's an anode, there's a cathode, and there's a separator. The separator has electrolytes. Let me mention about the electrolyte first, because what's in our commercial batteries are liquid electrolytes. These liquid electrolytes are organic, and invariably all the bad press that you hear, all the fires, invariably are from this reason, from the electrolyte burning for one reason or another. There could be a short circuit or some, uh, something, or maybe there was just no voltage cutoff. But in any event, liquid electrolytes. So that when we talk about the future, and I'll talk about this very briefly, this will be replaced by a solid electrolyte. It's not going to be tomorrow. It's not going to be in the next five years. But it will be, it will, or it will be a little bit in the next five years. But beyond that, um, it, we need major um, significant uh, advances in areas of interfaces between the electrode and the, uh, and the electrolyte. Um, in the case of liquid electrolytes, it's not such a problem, or at least it's controllable. Then you have the anode material. Typically, this is, is graphite, one reason being financial, but also it works extremely well. And the other is a cathode material. And as I'm uh, about to show you, the cathodes are what really, truly um, limits the energy uh, storage capabilities of lithium-ion batteries. On the right-hand side are some of the more uh, common uh, materials that are used. Lithium cobalt oxide is a cathode material. Its layered structure promotes the lithium ion insertion and deinsertion as needed. Um, you have also vanadium oxide. This is a zero gel material. And so now the same kind of process occurs there. There, you do not necessarily need to have two-dimensional materials. You can do very nicely with one-dimensional materials. Lithium iron phosphate, which is a derivative of the olivine structure, has channels where lithium ions go in and out. And all of these have, for the most part, rapid ion transport, but there's limitations on that. And that's what I'm going to talk about. The, um, the cathode I mentioned is what is limiting energy density in, batter in lithium ion batteries. The, um, this is a nice plot that shows you the voltage or the potential that's all referenced to lithium. And then over here, you have the capacity, which is really the energy density. Down here are the materials which we call anodes. The fact that the electrochemical community calls them negative electrodes, just consider the electrochemical community a little, OK. All right, some of my best friends. Um, and in any event, you have over here the positive electrode materials and those we call cathode materials. And you can see very rapidly that there are a number of materials that have very, very good energy storage that are down here that are the anode materials. Over here, you can see limitations. These days, there's a lot of work on trying to extend this and certainly to make them safe as well at the same time. But for the most part, getting to something on the order of 250, we'll call that milliamp hours per gram, is, is a chore. And for the most part, everything commercial that you have is roughly half of that. So there's quite a bit of room to grow here. 